Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to a mod highlight video for Battletech. And weirdly, it's a mod I've already highlighted once in the past, Rogue Tech. So the 998 release for Rogue Tech has just dropped, and I've been playing with the alpha for it for about a week beforehand. Um, this brings Rogue Tech to compatibility with the latest version of Battletech, which is 1.4. But in addition to that, since the last time we saw Rogue Tech, which is a million years ago effectively now, Things have changed dramatically. This is... There's no way you could, I think, make a game and try to sell it with the amount of complexity that Rogue Tech has because it would just be completely inaccessible to the average player. Um, you know, if we take a look at one of our mechs over here, you can see the mech design screen has changed ever so slightly from vanilla. Um, mech design is much more complex. There's so many more systems that you can mess with now to really make truly interesting and customized mechs, really specialized mechs, and really try to melt the system for every ounce of performance. In addition to that, the actual combat rules are significantly different as well. Uh, we'll do a little bit of an example of combat too. Um, the Mech Warrior promotions have all been changed up as well. I think the only thing that hasn't been changed is the multi-target ability. Everything else is completely different. So here, for example, in uh, Guts, we've got Juggernaut, Auto Brace after melee and death from above. Um, over here in Tactics, we've got Tactician, uh, which gives you mo bonus resolve gain and bonus to initiative and tactics rolls. Wait, what? what is initiative and tactics rolls? So there's no longer five phase combat system instead you get an initiative system where you sort of roll a die to see what initiative you start at and uh for your lighter mechs it's going to be quite high this hatchetman you can expect it's it's expected phase is about 18 so and it still counts down right so higher number of initiative is better and in fact if you get a good roll you'll get initiatives above 20 and then and take those actions and whereas big slow mechs um and depending on skill and different components that you might install in your mechs um that, uh, that that could be very, very low. So there's a wide range of initiatives now. Um, you can make really speedy mechs. It's it's crazy. Let's take a look at this hatchet in here. Um, one thing to note is the timeline in the game in Rogue Tech is set to 3040. That was mostly used for the setup of, I think, the, 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 the positions um, of the great houses in the Inner Sphere map, which is huge. I think, like, the base game, you're looking at about this many stars. And so now we've got this many stars including all the way over to clan space here so 3040 was set for i think used for the initial situation of the inner sphere however you will see you will see tech and different things like that from from beyond 3040 um they they've decided to have some flexibility with lore oh, look at the incursion over here lear and commonwealth poking into draconis combined space and this is actually something the map here this is actually uh, synced online. There's a little online component with Rogue Tech. Um, this map is sort of kind of multiplayer. If you manage to like, you know, really work for your employer, like let's say I'm, I'm doing a ton of missions for um, the Draconis Combine over here in Peacock, as an example, and I get the Draconis Combine to gain control of the system, this will actually like be the case for all players. Like this will change dynamically for everyone using Rogue Tech here. So it's not exactly multiplayer. You're not going to be facing other people directly, but that is happening. These little tags here, um, these are uh, these are other companies. These are other Argos. So Predators Marauders over here, Clams Marauders. You can see they're using their their auto generated names. Um, Angels Marauders. Lots of Marauders. There you go. Angers Buds. Uh, lots of people op operating in clan space. So really at this point, the clans should just be over here, but a lot of people are playing as the clans and the dynamic map, so they've reached here. So we're in an alt history where the clans are invaded slightly earlier. They're still on the periphery here, because this is um, uh, Greater uh, Valkyrate, but over here we do have Clan Wolf that's that's punking like that's, that's poking in here so we could we could go and interact and try to defend the inner sphere from the clans or or maybe go the other way around um and get a lot of clan loot too one way or another which is kind of neat, neat okay um let's talk about how the mech design works <clears throat> so uh let's uh i don't know what are we gonna look at i don't the osiris i'm trying to find a good example ah let's talk with the cicada there'll be some interesting examples of stuff Okay, so, on your mechs now, there is a hard-coded-in slot for your engine, 
and your gyro. Let's say I were to go to hit this button to strip equipment. There we go. So we've stripped all parts off, but you can see there's still stuff in here. What's the deal with that? Well, there is a base slot. So your cockpit, and this is new as of 998, your cockpit has been split into three. Previous versions of Rogue Tech still had cockpit customization, but now it's been split into three. So there's your fire control system, your cockpit, and your basic sensors, but those can be upgraded. Um, and in fact, here, um, this mech has a fire control system for auto cannons in here. So bonus accuracy with auto cannons, reduced uh, recoil, reduced heat with auto cannons. So if we put that back in, we have an upgraded fire control system, and this one is specialized specifically for auto cannons. Um, the same thing can happen with armor. So you, this is my, my my default normal armor over here. Um, you do have to spend money to repair even your armor after battles in default rogue tech. So you can see here, normal armor is actually cheaper and easier to repair. But we might want to swap that. For example, we can have ferro fibrous armor over here, which is what this is. Well, this is heavy ferro. Um, and this is lighter. Ferro fib armor is lighter than regular armor. However, it's bulkier. And as a result, it reserves all these dynamic slots. It just fills this up so we're going to have less space to play with. Um, but if I were to put weapons here, so let's say this, there's a, um, um, I can put an, an auto cannon here, right? Because it's got the hard, uh, the um, hard points. So if I do that, it's fine. It just shoves the dynamic slots somewhere else. So it it doesn't fill this area, but it still does limit how many slots you've got. Same thing with structure. So there's your basic structure over here. And if I were to go and put in, um, not patchwork materials, oh, endo steel. So it's the same thing. This is actually gonna save us two tons. We're getting two tons for free out of this. Well, it's a half a million a C bill part, but otherwise we're getting half uh, two tons extra to work with on this mech, uh, but it fills up tons more dynamic slots. Um, you need an engine. We actually can't run the mech at all without an engine. This is not, there's not a default engine. I mean, there's this engine slot, but we need the fusion core. Um, and so we've got the engine core 170. Do I have any other engine cores sitting around here? A 160. So I could downgrade the engine slightly. So my 170 is eight tons. The 160 here is also eight tons. Oh, okay, so not, not much point in, in doing that, but there are other engines. If we check the store actually, uh, we go to equipment, maybe. Um, there you go. Look at this. We can get a 360 core. It weighs 37 tons. Um, a lot more speed. Really, these bigger engines are mostly going to be for heavier mechs. Uh, because So the bigger the engine, the faster you'll go. But it's modified based on your weight. So um, let's say we put in... So we'll put in this engine core over here. There we go. So this should now be updated. So there we go. So our move... Um, is we move out 120, which is max of five hexes. Not not super great, but it's going to be okay. We have this patchwork material. It's just all it does. It, it's it's valuable, but it just reduces our weight slightly more. So I mean, we can throw that in maybe over there, and so on and so forth. Uh, we actually there's this weird thing with the engines. Um, the engines have built-in heat sinks, and for like a big proper size engine, effectively, they'll they're by default they're supposed to have ten heat sinks built in. This one here only has six built into the engine itself. So you need four other heat sinks outside of the engine, but they count as weightless because they're they're supposed to be sort of built in. So we've got this warning here that we've got one or more components in this mech are installed in an invalid location. It's sort of sort of a, a wonky error here. It's not very clear, but that error is because I need to add four more heat sinks to uh to match up with this so as soon as i do and none of these are changing my tonnage right 17 tons remaining still 17 tons you can see the warning's gone away because i've satisfied that uh you can't mix and match um uh regular heat sinks with dual heat sinks so here here's a prototype dual heat sink if i try to throw this in here i'll get another error again because you can't mix and match that um and you get a kit uh the engine cooling here you can i think it's or no it's cooling here you can get these uh these kits to replace the your engine heat sinks would say a dual heat sink kit and then you got to make sure all your external heat sinks here are also dual heat sinks so there's going to be that um yeah so there's a lot more design one of the things i also want to show off let me go and revert oh i may have to revert this way confirm is there is now and i think this is new as of 998 specifically uh, multiple types of ammo. So I have an auto cannon, AC5, this is light AC5, and I've got my AC5 ammo, but I've got two different versions of it. I've got this armor piercing version, which does times two chance to crit, 
And one of the mods included with Rogue Tech is Through Armor Criticals. It is possible if you just hit someone hard enough, you could get a crit even if you haven't exposed the structure, which is interesting. Um, so we've got that, and then we've also got the Caseless AC5. So the Caseless AC5 is, in a sense, not as good. It has more recoil, plus two recoil, so that's bad. Although I do have a little bit of recoil compensation here with my fire control system, as well as if we get, um, I want to say more guts rating on our pilot, I think that'll also increase our recoil compensation, which is kind of nice. And I think the light version has no recoil by itself. Yeah, light autocannons are recoilless, which is kind of nice. Um, it, they also ignore evasion pips, which is really important, especially early on when your accuracy sucks, mostly because you will have a critical lack of sensors. Sensors and vision is a massive thing with the mod. Uh, I'll show you, we'll, we'll, do, we'll go into combat and we'll really showcase that quite a bit. Uh, anyway, so I got the armor piercing ammo and then I've got the caseless over here, which has more recoil, but because it's caseless, it's, it fits in more. So this fits 23 shots per ton instead of eight shots per ton. So we've got a mix and match over here. This is not a very interesting example, perhaps, of multiple uh, ammo. And you can switch in combat. You can see here it says in the bottom in, in blue there. If you click the your, your percentage to hit chance on your display, you know in the bottom right corner, you look at your weapons, you see your percentage to hit. If you click on that for the gun, it'll cycle between the different ammo options. Um, but you'll see things like with missiles, you'll have like missiles that don't do as much damage, but do a lot more heat. Oh, actually, on my, I think the Osiris over here. Yes, we have an SRM-6. And what we have is we have acid ammo. It's slightly less accuracy. Um, actually, the minus one accuracy might be default for SRMs. I'm not sure. And it's minus three damage. So they do less damage, but for the next two rounds, they take 30% more damage. So with this, with SRM-6, even if I have a low accuracy shot, I'm still gonna take it, because as long as one missile hits, the target's gonna take 30% more damage, which is kind of amazing. Uh, the Osiris is cool, it runs really fast. Take a look at its movement over here. It moves nine hexes, it's got a 240. Our engine core is a 240, it's huge, um, effectively. Uh, four things. I mean, eight tons ain't bad. Uh, and we do have an XL engine component here. So um, if I go and remove this, does it upgrade the... Yeah, see, 13.5 ton engine. But if I put in the engine XL component, it saves some tonnage here. Um, the engine XL is fairly... It's bulkier. It's lighter, right? It's an extra light engine, but it's bulkier. So it actually puts engine component slots in both side torsos, uh, which makes it a lot easier for the engine to get hit. Oh, we also didn't talk about the uh, the arm components here. Uh, this one doesn't have a really good example. Let's go and uh, pop out of here and look at the hatchetman. So, um, there we go. There you go. So, upper arm. All mechs have an upper arm component. Some can get a lower arm component. I don't think I've got one kicking around here. But if you get a lower arm component, right, so that's sort of below the elbow, um what it'll do the lower arm will give you like plus one to hit with arm weapons as well as i think slightly increased melee damage i may be wrong about that and a hand like this one the hand counts as the lower arm component so it's got the built-in plus one accuracy that's the same thing if you have a lower arm or a hand you'll get the plus one um, accuracy with arm mounted weapons uh the melee accuracy may be part of the hand as opposed to the lower arm and the hand also gives percentage bonus to melee damage most mechs in uh, rogue tech do very little melee damage because they all have this negative melee damage quirk so your base damage is always your tonnage and typically in in regular battle tech you would see perhaps bonus damage from a chassis quirk in rogue tech there's always negative but the reason for that is it's negative assuming you don't have any other components as you add things like the hand with plus 30 percent as you add things like a melee weapon like a hatchet which is plus 60 base melee damage and then more percentage multipliers that goes up this doesn't actually show us our true number here the 83 i believe i believe this might be adding in the plus 60 but i don't think it's counting in the percentages um, because in practice, this hatchetman, I think melees for something like 113 or something in combat. We'll see uh, when we get in there. So, uh, but it's quite cool that you've got these like different arm components. And if you check the stock combat roll here, or you mouse over this bit, uh, you'll see some mechs have some limiters. In fact, I suspect that um, all the mechs, oh, the Wolfhound might be a good example, because I think it can fit a hand on one side, but not the other. Nope, never mind. It could have hands on both. We're saving cost by not having it on the other side. It's got the lower arm component, which means it's got accuracy. Uh, what about the Osiris? 
Okay, it also doesn't have any limitations. Seriously? Because a bunch of them... Ah, there you go. Okay. So this one, on both the left and the right arm, it's limited to just upper. It can't have a lower arm component. Basically, this mech here, the Osiris, or the Cicada, doesn't have arms, is really what it is. So I can't throw a lower arm component on here, which means I'll never get plus one accuracy with my left and right arm weapons, which is part of the reason this mech design doesn't actually put weapons in its arms, because there's no reason to, because we don't get bonus accuracy, and as we know, arms tend to get shot off pretty easily, so they've, they've gone ahead and done that. Um, the sorting here, one of the mods included in here because back in the day prior to prior to BattleTech what 1.3 maybe 1.2 you couldn't sort your um your mech bay over here um and so one of the mods is called uh, I think it's called sort by tonnage or something like that um and it, it would sort the mechs based on their tonnage now you can see these mechs are not sorted by tonnage why is that well because the mod also has an option to sort by value and that's what it's doing here you could turn off that option so you could sort it by tonnage instead or you could turn off the mod entirely because right now if i do go and resort this and then i pop out and pop back in I guess it remembered, but maybe if I do a mission, it'll swap it around. I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll still do an auto swap um, at some point. Um, but this is sorting by value, which is kind of interesting. Oh, this is wrong. The hatchet was here. There we go. Because, um, like, our heaviest mech is this hunchback, but it's not our most valuable mech. Now, I don't think there's a, a way to see what the mech value is, of un unfortunately. But it is a really low-value mech. And the reason is, this is a really old design. You see, it's got no fancy engine, no Excel stuff, no fancy armor components, no fancy weapons. These, There's no, you know, pulse weapons. There's no extended range weapons. There's nothing like that. No fancy cockpit components. This Hunchback, despite being our heaviest mech, is really not our best mech. But if we start tuning it up, right, if we start putting in, like, the Ferrofib, um, armor and the endo composite. Now all of a sudden we've saved some weight. We've got an extra two tons available to play around with. Ooh, that's quite interesting. What do we do with that? Um, you know, do we put in some fire control systems? Do we go and just increase its armor? All of a sudden we can make a fancy mech out of this. I'm not going to do it right now, but it's quite cool. Okay, let's go ahead and do a mission so we can talk about some of the in-combat stuff. We may not finish the mission, we'll see. Um, I'm actually a little bit leery about doing this. See, it's weird. This is a half Half difficulty mission. So you would think, well, this should be fairly easy, right? Half skull mission. Missions in Rogue Tech are a little trickier than, than you might be used to um, because the combat's a lot harder. And so you have to be very careful about what missions you take. And battle missions are tricky because you're up against another lance that's going to be pretty beefy, plus they're going to have reinforcements. So you'll be outnumbered, and it's actually going to be fairly scary despite the skull difference over here. Um, you really also until you're really sure about yourself. Uh, convoy ambushes are pretty hard because um, vehicles in Rogue Tech hit hard. And more importantly, destroyed base missions are insanely difficult because turrets are brutal. On the flip side, if you can get missions to defend bases, um, they're a lot easier than you might, um, than, than might otherwise be indicated because you'll have friendly turrets. Escort missions are a bit easier too. I can assassinate over here. Uh, it does suck that it's the... Um, uh, the planetary government, so I'm not going to get rep. Unless I just do the hot landing, we might be able to show off some stuff over here. It might... Here's... Okay. I'm going to do this because I think it's going to be surprisingly difficult. Um, we're going to make most of our money through salvage, so I'll go ahead and do that. What we're looking for in terms of making money... There we go. Canes on the hatchet. We don't have a lot of... Part of it, our pilots are really low skill, so it's going to be tricky. But yeah, we're dropping with one and a half skulls worth of stuff for a half skull mission, and yet I'm terrified. Absolutely terrified. Um... What was I going to say? I was going to say something. Oh, yeah, the parts. Um, if you can get uh, engines, which is hard because, okay, you know how, like, typically in Battletech, you know, the, the, the kills that ruin the most salvage is center torso. Well, you don't tend to destroy center torsos in Rogue Tech. Instead, the center torso hits take out the engine, which then disable the mech. Um, and the problem is you really would like to capture the engines attack because they tend to be really valuable. Each engine is like a million or more. And while, yeah, a fully intact mech you can sell for a fair amount of money. Remember, you only get 10% of it. So a million or more for any engine, but you're only getting 10%. So you're looking at selling an engine for 100,000 and more, um, which is a lot of money. Uh, um, selling a mech would be more, right? So you're talking about you sell the mechs for 300,000, 400,000 maybe for a light mech. But default rogue tech, you need five parts to put them together. You can't sell them until you have all five parts. And so, and, and you gotta think that each part, 
you know, so let's say you sell a mech for a half a million, which actually for a light mech and even some of the medium mechs we're going to face here is not necessarily likely. But let's say we do. Okay. Um, well, it let's still means each part is only worth about 100,000 to sell. So an engine is worth that much, if not more. Like a bigger engine will be worth more. Or if you get one of the um, the extra light engine components, it's 2.5 million C-bills. So it's a 250,000 point sale immediately. And you don't need to collect a bunch of parts. So that if you're, and, and money is a big thing in Rogue Tech because after battle, even if your mechs look mostly unscathed, you will need, you will need to repair them because armor repairs take time and money in base battletech armor repairs are free and instant but not the case here and if you have to start replacing replacing internal structure or like arms or something like that um your downtime is going to be huge so after a battle that was otherwise mostly successful if you're down for a month or more well you've got to spend a whole month of maintenance so that's going to be what three four hundred thousand c bills so money is going to be really tight um also tight is this map Wow, this is going to suck. This landscape is really bad. Yeah, so we're over here, but we'll probably be getting flanked. Okay, there's a border here, so we're probably not getting flanked this way. There's a lot of map this way, so we're probably going to get flanked on the right by reinforcements. There's not much cover. I mean, I could just totally stay back here. Force them to come to me through the open desert. And I have some hills here, and maybe even here, to assuming there's some flank shots over here will be somewhat protected. All right, Quill is going first. You can see the initiative rolls, right? Huge numbers here. Quill's going on initiative 19. Um, and there's no pre-combat round, like the different movement style in Rogue Tech, like there isn't default. So this Wolfhound is it's kind of a sniper bot. It's got the light gauss rifle, extended range medium laser. Um, I think what I'm going to do with Quill is I will position you up here to try to get some snipes down. That's going to be all right. The question is, what do I do with the others? Now, Kane, you know Kane's going to want to get in the thick of it. I mean, he's got extended range medium lasers, and even the Ultra AC-10 has got half-decent range. We could position everyone on top of the ridge, but Kane is Kane, so he's going to go and sprint right down Quit here and see if he can get some melee shots off or something. Um, we actually, we can't get any sensor contacts in, range, in, in round one. Oh, there's tons of modifiers to look at here, too. Uh, desert biome, yeah, but here, cover. Okay, sensors and vision. So we can see our, our visual lock range and our sensor lock range. And we also get rolls. Every round of combat, there's different rolls and things like that. Different sensors kicking in. Here's an initiative rolls, for example. And yeah, sensors offline, first round of battle. Good to go. Um, Waiting on you, Commander. So the Cicada has a Flamer, which is short range, but the other weapons all have pretty decent range. I think of putting you up on the ridge, too. Do we want to put you up here? I promise if I do that. Like, if we want to go right up to the edge, there's no woods. On the other hand, we'll be quite far away from most things. I think I will move the Cicada up over here. Cicada doesn't move very fast, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter. We've got time. Now, Artistic Sumo is in the Osiris, which moves super fast. It's also really hot, especially in the desert here. It's got speed, so we could go down here for maneuverability. On the other hand, extended range weapons, I mean, you'll hit from far away, but we do want to land those smurms for the acid. I think I have to move you down here. On my way, double time. But I'm not sure that's actually smart. We can always, we can always run back after we've engaged. Now, it'll be hard to convince Kane to pull back, especially since he's got a hatchetman. And yeah, his melee is 113. All right, new round of combat. Yeah, I'm going to move Kane to the edge of the forest here. So what's your vision range? Yeah, 420. 5, 450 sensor lock, although we haven't seen anything. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. And yet Quill's going to come up to just the edge over here. I suppose I could delay you. Hold on, let's do this. And see so you've got here, you might be at some sensor locks. We're just going to go ahead and do a bunch of reserves. Where the hell is the opposition? They might be being smart. Uh -huh. Which is annoying. Okay, well, I guess I'll move up now. Move up to here. That way I can sort of dance backwards and forwards a little bit. Oh! There we go. There's a sensor blip. So some sort of Jenner over there. Okay. Do we move forward with Artistic Sumo? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's fine for now. This is a regular move, not a sprint I'm doing here. Confirming new bogey. New bogey. Oh, you actually got a shot. 
Now you can see the odds to hit are really low. And the thing is, you're really going to have a lot of bad odds to hit. Here, it's, we've got a huge difficulty boost because of the range. But we've got no sensor lock as well. We... I guess we're not getting a penalty for moving. I guess because we just walked. But yeah, no sensor lock. I mean, I may as well take the shot. What I might do is... I'm just going to fire with three so we generate no heat. So this is really a free shot. It's very low chances to hit. And yet we hit twice. Okay, we hit a griffin. It's got 40% resistance. So either... Well, we don't... No, the new bulwark isn't in here. So it must be guarded. It must be cover plus guarded. And I can actually get a shot with the cicada here. From high ground. And the cicada has really good heat sinking. Because these are not very hot weapons. Now... Okay, I don't have multiple ammo. We do have 25 rounds. Now, that's going to be split between the two ACs here. So, we've got 12.5 full rounds of shots. So, it's a little harder for ammo weapons to justify the low precision attacks, but I think it's going to be okay here. I guess it depends on how many targets there are. We did miss completely, so it's a little crummy. Oh, evasion is permanent in uh, Rogue Tech. You don't, you can't whittle down someone's evasion um, through, through shooting. I'm still a little worried about getting flanked over here. Can I just shoot from where I am? 40% chance. If I move up to here... Okay. There's obstructed shot. Okay, still 40%, but I can bring in the ER medium laser. And I'm still in the forest. Okay, a little scooch forward. I don't have any evasion anymore. But, let's take it. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah, enemy reinforcements. That is what it's telling us. Good. Okay. See, we're fighting, and it is over there on the right, like I predicted. Waiting for orders. Now, Kane really does love to move forward, but I mean, he's just gonna get obliterated. Um, you've got good Roger. evasion. Here's what I'm gonna do, Kane. I'm just gonna get you to reserve. Ten we might four. be able to open up a better shot of some kind. Aye, aye. Um, artistic sumo ditto. You still have good evasion right now. We're just gonna. Uh, what about Awaiting dead mate? I mean, if we think these guys might move forward... Yeah, I'm... Hold on. I'm gonna reserve some more. Waiting for my opening. There you go. Griffin, I think, is moving up a bit. I don't think I'll be able to shoot him from up above here with the cover. Maybe I can. It might be obstructed. We'll see. And then the Jenner. Who's no longer in the wood. Ow! Oh, he's shooting at Quill up here. Interesting. I'm kind of okay with that, because Quill's probably in a safer location when I say that. Right, we're going to get flanked. Quill may need to move out of here. Okay, that's fine. Um, I don't know if this Wolfhound has jump jets. Weirdly, I thought these were the safe spots, but I'm actually wondering if jumping down here might be safer. Although, they're still up here, because we've got the side cover. Okay, it's Kane's turn. We can't melee. It would actually show us if we were ranged. By the way, you can sprint melee, you can sprint shoot in Rogue Tech as well. You get a penalty to hit, but you can... Now, Kane could say sprint up here and get half decent shots. And he'd, he'd have some evasion and he'd be in the woods, but I think it would be inherently unsafe. If I move here, it's not the worst shot in the world. I'm a little leery about moving closer to the, um, the flankers, though. I could just pull back. It's very uncane like Actually, that's still not a bad shot on this Jenner. Actually, not bad here either, but he's in the woods, so I want to... Not fire on the ones who are in the woods. We're, we're going to do this. I know, it's yeah. very against type for Kane to move backwards. But it's going to be okay. Uh, this Ultra AC-10 fires twice, so we only have eight more shots out of this. That's pretty low odds. I think I'm going to turn off this. There's no reason not to fire the lasers, especially if we've got no heat generation over here. Engaging only one hit. Structure exposed. It's not too bad. We might be able to generate some crit Wait soon. So, dead mate. 29. If I move here... Okay, I'm still gonna wait with Deadmate. I'm still... Because I don't think these guys have gone. I can't see their initiative if I don't have a scan. No, I guess they have gone. So they're not gonna move any closer. What can I do for you? So, either way, I can't bring the AC5s to bear. These are 35% shots. Same odds here, so there's sort of no reason to move. We don't have any recoil on these? Yeah, no. All right, I'm going to shoot the Jenner. Oh my god, we missed both again. Just wasting ammo here. Just kind of terrifying. 
I suppose when we run out of the ones from the AC2s, we can close in a little bit more for the AC5s. So then we got the Osiris over here, which doesn't have any heat right now. I'm wondering about doing this. Again, I'm very terrified of the stuff over there. I wish we had Ace Pilot right now. It would be great. See, look at me remembering that Ace Pilot is a thing. It would be great to move, like, to fire and then move, or at least set that up for next turn. Either way, I can't get really good odds on this guy. I mean, certainly better than this. Can I get the... Okay, I think I'll do this. We'll still be... F We're actually putting the extra distance between the Locusts. These guys are still fairly far away. We're going to be in the woods. We're going to get a decent amount of evasion, and we can run next turn. So we'll do this. The two hit chances might be slightly different now that we've moved up. There's, there's sometimes a disconnect between Battle Tech and the Rogue Tech stuff. We would overheat now. Overheating in Rogue Tech is kind of dangerous because rather than taking internal structure damage, you have to do a roll against all your ammo packs to see if they explode. So I'd rather they didn't. I am going to take the shot with the Smurms. It's low chance, but we've got six attacks. And if one lands, then we're going to boost our damage on future turns because of the Acid. Acid. It did hit. There we go. Acid debuff. Took out a Jump Jet, which doesn't really matter too much. But... Now, Waiting Quill up here. So, Quill's still getting fired at from over here. Um, we've got a few possibilities. I could try to break that line of sight. If I do this, I get an evasion pip. I do get closer, but honestly, with the ledge here, I'm betting there's going to be a bunch of line of sight issues for them. we got a half-decent shot against the Jenner. Coordinates received. So, I'm going to do this. It also might give us a scanner blip over here. No, it did not. So yeah, we'll just fire this Jenner. Oh, baby! Double tap. Losing some initiative because the ouch. Just to three of four hit points. Okay. Kane. Kane wants to bring the pain. And we could just take an action. Now, the Jenner hasn't acted yet this combat. So I'm not going to delay Kane. I am going to move you up here, and you're going to take a full shot on this Jenner. Who is very easy to hit now. How come? You're not shot, shut down. Oh, because... Because I don't think you've got movement going on right now. Or it's... Oh, instability! You became unstable, so you lost all your evasion from this shit. Hell yes. So yeah, we're going to unload with absolutely everything on this guy. We could, at this point, take the offensive push. So offensive push is the replacement for um, precise shot. It only costs 10 resolve, so you can use it more often. But the big difference is, whereas precise shot from Battletech increases your chance to hit, offensive push reduces your chance to hit. So you can see our chance to hit has gone down a lot, but it does give you the ability to take called shots. It'd be fun to do some legging stuff, but to be honest, we don't even have, like, a huge amount of called shot mastery. Our odds of actually landing these aren't fantastic. I, I'm going to go for a regular attack here. Much higher chance to hit. There's too many bogeys out here. I'm not going to start being greedy with the called shots. Maybe when we get down to, like, the last guy, there's something we can do. All right, we destroyed this guy's engine. Hope we can salvage that. Now, sometimes those messages are a little weird. Sometimes there's, like, because there can be multiple engine slots. And multiple things that count as engines. Sometimes a destroyed engine message doesn't actually mean the mech has been taken out of commission. Um, but in this case, it seems to have. I'm going to delay deadmate. I'm still hoping that we can get a better shot to bring in the rest. I might have to move you down here. Elevation is good, though. You do get a bonus for, to hit from height. I see he's got ace pilot. All right. You Osiris. Okay, I definitely want to move you out of here. And we've got a ton of heat right now. Um, I could move here and take an unobstructed shot. I'm, I'm not going to fire all weapons. It's the same percentage. So I'll do this so I'm a little further away from you. If I do Moving this... Oh, and then... Even this, I'm still going to have a little bit of heat. I don't, I don't think it's worth taking a shot at all. I'm just going to brace. We'll get rid of all the heat. 19%. I may as well have no heat and then do a proper volley next turn. But yeah, this I, Osiris is going to be a lot of sort of hit and run. It's one of the reasons I would really like to have him have an ace pilot. But even then, like, with ace pilot, right? It's like, move up, shoot, next turn, shoot, and move back. Except I can't shoot twice in a row. I think I'm going to have to redesign the Osiris a little. Maybe pull off one of the lasers in exchange for a little bit extra heat sinks. That way I can reliably fire maybe all four lasers every round which is a lot better than five lasers every other round. So someone did move out a little. Okay, it does bring you into range of my AC5s, and there's a slightly higher chance to hit. It's still not great. 
but I guess we'll take it. Um, if I'm here, 1435. If I'm here... So same odds. So I'll stay here because it's blocking the line of sight from all these guys and leaves us in the woods. We don't have evasion because we're not moving around, but that's going to be okay. Um, rather than fire the caseless version, I'm going to fire the... Well, I don't have a lot of these, but I would like to avoid building up recoil. Yeah, I'm just going to fire these. We got some hits at least. Still not great. All right, Quill's still in a really good sniper position. Um, and if I stick closer on this side, these guys here, and there are some people over there, still won't be able to fire. Let's just check. If I go here, 30, 20, or 40, 28, and who else can I hit you? 20, 16. If I move to back here, oh, it's actually slightly better odds because we're hitting a little more from the side. Okay, I'll do that because that, again, really helps cut down the angle that people can fire on the wolfhound. We may as well shoot the griffin, because we've been hitting... Or we're trying to hit the griffin. Oh, nice shot with the gauss. 40 damage. I mean, he is in the woods. The Cyrus is being fired at, but he's got those evasion pips. And even if he got hit, he's in the woods and he's guarded. Waiting for orders. All right, Kane still can't melee. Oh, Kane, Kane is going to be tempted to run up, though. And really start some shit. We do this, we get the slight flank attack. That's a pretty good shot. It's not going to be a ton of evasion. But then we can almost certainly melee next turn. That 113 melee is extremely tempting. Okay, this is a terrible idea, but it's Kane. We've held them back too long. Kane likes to move up. So the auto cannon shot accuracy is not going to be great. Oh, we've got recoil because we fired it last turn. I'm still going to take the shot. Especially since I think we're going to melee next turn, which will help us get rid of the recoil. Oh, we hit him in the head. Got rid of the left torso and, of course, left arm. So he's poten potentially got fewer weapons, which is great. Yeah, let's do this move again with the Osiris. I think all these... I mean, I could run up to here and fire. And it is better at 67%, but I'm really worried about getting wailed on. I'm a little worried about getting shot from the side here, too. At least here, this... Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Copy that. The Osiris is a lighter mech than the Hatchetman. So, and again, we can't... Uh, I guess we'll still fire the Smurms to try to put a debuff. And actually, the Smurms, you know, they do do some knockback. Now, even, I think, lasers in Rogue Tech, yeah, they do some stability damage. Um... And what's going to happen as well is when you once you become unstable, you have to do all these piloting checks. There we go. He failed one. So even though his stability bar is not full, he has to do piloting checks every time he takes um, stability hit once he becomes unstable, and he might fall over. So that's what happened there. So he fell over. He's at 2 of 4 health. If we could just take the pilot out, that would be great. <gasps> the Stinger's moved up to melee the hatchet? I was a little surprised by that. Light damage. Yeah, I don't think he's packing a bunch of melee weapons. Waiting on you, Commander. We have limited vision from uh, from the cicada here to see what's going on. Let's move up a scooch. Yeah, I'm still wondering if we might end up going down there. It'd be nice if we had jump jets, but still. We'll just keep sniping from Got here. It. Ooh, I can take a call shot against the griffin. That's right, because he's down. Slightly better odds to hit against the stinger. Although he's in the woods. I suppose this was the the, um, the griffin here. Again, it feels like the chance to leg these guys is kind of low. And we need to you know, take out both legs. If we hit the torso, that's going to be another point of damage to the griffin. Tell you what, I'll go for the headshot. We might get lucky. Probably we're just going to hit the center torso and, and take out his engine. There you go. Engine destroyed. Okay. So he's... Oh, he, no, he did... Um, he did GG out. Yes, Commander. We might still be able to loot some parts of the engine there. And I, I think we'll move up with Quill. Still not the world's greatest shots here, but they'll do. Yeah, no, this is going to be fine. Copy that. We've got a better chance to hit the Locust. Like, f quite a bit better. But I'm, I'm probably kind of eager to take this guy out as quickly as possible. I think we'll be focusing on the Stinger. 
lower combat odds be damned. Honestly, taking out heat sinks and jump jets can increase our percentage chance of getting slightly better loot from a random loot. So that's not so bad. Is it Kane's turn now? Is it Kane's turn? Is it Kane's turn? Ooh, you're ace piloting into the open. Commander? It is Kane's turn. And I was just going to punch the stinger. Well, I mean, I guess we avoid, we ignore our terrain anyway. But here's, he's just moved. If I go here, I can stand there. Our chance to hit him actually went, you know, it does change a little bit depending on the angle. But if we go here, we'll be in the woods. So somewhat protected from whatever garbage might come from this angle. They still haven't moved up. They might be chicken. Um, that's hitting him in the side. It'd be great to hit him right in the back. But then I'm not in the forest. It is 99% chance to hit from the back, though. I mean, it's Kane, right? Plus, he does have Juggernaut. He will automatically brace after melee. He might just be able to take the Locust out in one punch. I'm there. 113 damage to the back. Go time. Yeah, that was pretty effective. Woo! <clears throat> <laughs> Woo! That was good. Oh, man. That was very satisfying. So yeah, at least I'm braced. All right, Quill's being shot. Oh, Chaff Cloud, Blinding Flare, Sensors are scrambled. So Quill's not gonna be able to take a good shot next turn. That's Power Armor that just moved up. Power Armor's tiny, it's just a dude in a suit, basically. It's not a, it's not a proper mech. Um, they're like five tonners. Oh my God, more Blinding Flares. This is really annoying. Um, they don't have a lot of hit points, although they can be very hard to hit. Now, the Osiris could come up and punch this guy, but it's only 15 damage melee. That being said, I have, like, stupid amounts of heat. So, all I, I, I'd be moving away. I suppose I may as well melee him. Now, the machine guns don't fire in melee, unfortunately. Now, if I do that, he might just punch me back, but I don't think he's got a very powerful melee attack. I don't know what just happened last time. I think it makes sense to do this. It's really crummy, but it, it'll be a decent way for us to just wear down some of our heat and at least if he wants to get behind me he won't be in the woods so that's something so here's the stinger he did come behind me oh okay so he, he couldn't melee me from behind yeah, though, still being in the woods but he moved into these woods over here still now deadmate and quill can hit him from behind right is that his rear arc is green the rear arc I think so I think blue is the side arc Green is rear. Because we're not getting we're not getting the full display on him. But I'm pretty sure this is hitting him from behind. Huge chance to hit with everything. Armor piercing weapons are a go. Like rear attack. Ignore cover. All we did is blow off his, his arm. Yeah, Could have been a little bit better, but we'll we'll get Quill in there too. Uh, so Quill doesn't have to move, although I think we will to lower the number of targets those guys can shoot at. I mean, if the Hatchetman was the most uh, vulnerable, he's still going to be the most vulnerable, but we don't know. So there we go. Hit him in the back. Yep. Got it. Boom. Engine, gyro, gone. Taking out gyros always knocks people down too, but I think this guy, I think that was a proper engine kill. Again, we want to loot the engines, but we got, we got to take down the, the number of opposition here as much as possible. And it's possible for us to kill the engine, but keep the um, engine, like the engine XL component, which is the really valuable part. So I've got Chaff Cloud. Yeah, all my sensors are scrambled. Accuracy is going to be basically nothing. Uh, it's too bad I can't reach in the melee. I can get damn close. What I think is going to happen here with Kane is I'm just going to pop behind this hill. So we can get closer. I mean, these guys might still be able to shoot me. Well, the commando probably will be able to, but that's probably it. Um, they won't be able to shoot me from behind if I do this. Unless he hops. He might be able to jump behind me, but it'll generate a bunch of heat. I'll do this, gotcha. and we'll set up a really good turn. I wonder if I could have done that with just a move. I might have been able to reach that with a move rather than a sprint, and I would have been able to brace. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Aye, aye. I don't think I could, actually. So, Osiris, the artistic sumo, rather, I should say, in this Osiris can actually run up in melee for 15 damage, which we're not going to do. Um, we will run up a fair amount, so an unobstructed side shot here. Yeah, as I was going to say, it's going to be pretty rough, because he moved a lot. It's not going to be a high accuracy shot, and then we're just generating a bunch of heat. I'm wondering... Well, let me just delay you, although... I don't know how much else is left. 
Because I think you just moved this round. Yeah, no, yep, we're just... Commander. Well, let me keep delaying, just in case someone Copy else moves. That's still 14. Okay, now we're going to be in a 5. There we go. Okay, dead mate. Yeah, dead mate, you gotta, you gotta get down from here. Um, or do you? If these guys come around the corner, we might be able to shoot from the top. But no, I think we're gonna have to run you down. It's too bad you don't have jump jets. What I should do is put a jump jet on the cicada. Uh, um, in, so, in Battletech, I, I basically max jump jets on all my mechs all the time. Because jumping is, is crazy OP. It gives you huge maneuverability, massive amounts of evasion. And other than generating, like, you know, 10 heat or something like that, it has basically no cost. In Rogue Tech, jump jets are not as OP because it does give you a penalty to hit. And heat management tends to be a little harder in Rogue Commander. Tech because of reasons. Um, yeah, I could run up and melee him. Maybe I just should. Uh, it might open us up to some trouble. If we get a good initiative roll next turn on the Osiris, though, then we'll be in good position to just sort of, like, back up to here after. It's only 70% chance. No, I won't. I guess I could sprint and shoot, but even that seems really dumb. Actually, this is a regular move and shoot, but it's still low chance. We're going to generate way too much heat. I'm just going to move to here, stay out of range, and do this. Anyway, um, so in Rogue Tech, it's there's less incentive to go max jump jets on everyone. But it's still nice to get a jump jet just for stuff like this to avoid giant walk rounds. And one one jump jet isn't very, isn't very heavy. Okay, this is a... New round of combat. We're on phase 20. Commander? Do I want to move Kane first? I think so. Only 74% chance to melee? I guess we still have all the chaff cloud. I think I'm going to take it, though. And I'm, I'm okay with going for one of the flanks. Um, if I go here, my back is facing the wall, which seems the, the safest thing to do. Let's start with this. Remember, I will be braced after the melee. I like how there's a little animation for the hatchet on the hatchet man. That's that's part of base game. This happens sometimes with a melee attack. The camera gets like wonky. So we couldn't see what was going on here. But yeah, you do have to make a piloting check after you move to uh, see if you become unstable. Looks like we actually just took out the commando in one shot. It's too bad we couldn't properly see it. That would have been really nice. Or no, the commando ran over here after. Okay, it must have just jumped here and then braced. Unless it's a different commando. No, there's debris. It is a different commando. We killed that guy in one shot. Okay. Uh, there's a dude over here. Uh, that's obstructed. Oh, there's the power armor. He's going to be so hard to hit. 34. Yeah, I guess my best chance is to move here. It does open up an unobstructed shot from the other guy, but it's still long range. There you go. You see the numbers changed a little bit once I adjust it. I'm going to go ahead and take the shot. Not bad. Wait. Hand crit, hand crit, hand to straight, hand to straight. Did I hit both arms somehow? From this side? Wait, what? I don't know. Power armor. He jump. He's small and evasive. and He's going to be very hard to kill. You just... Oh, it's such a pain. They go down fast. But you got to hit him first. He's hitting, it could be a PPC, it could be, a, could be a, some sort of Gauss thing, I couldn't tell from the art. Okay, now we've got Artistic Sumo with no heat, which is great. Could run up and try to melee. 38% chance to melee with power armor. Not that we're going to do that anyway, because the damage would be low. Look at these to hit chances, they're just terrible. I think moving here is probably going to be good. We will be blocking line of sight from this guy. Um, we'll be in the woods. If I go here, is it the same odds? 24 and 16 and 4. Yeah, it is. Um, which feels slightly safer, even. So we're going to do this. They're not great to hit chances. But that's what happens when there's all this movement. And yeah, it's still too hot. We'll turn off the machine gun. Okay, it's up to 35 now that we moved. That's going to happen a lot. Plus, part of it is the, the vision adjusts, right? We went from... It, it doesn't know that maybe we'll see or this or that, or it's a disconnect with Battletech and Rogue Tech. I don't know. Target move, plus 6. But we're hitting the side that's already been damaged. We might be able to take out... I, mean, I think that was the arm, the hand crit. There we go. Now we got rid of the arm completely, so maybe shutting down some weapons. And now he's debuffed with acid, which is fun. Uh, I don't know what's moving around there. I could turn off the dynamic camera, but I do like it a little bit. And we got the cicada, which is way outside of combat. I could move you to the top of the ridge. Now, you know what? We'll move you down here. The flamers could do great stuff in the desert. Yeah, you're just, it's such a slow mech. Putting him up here may have been a mistake. 
It wasn't really able to deal much damage. I thought the long range stuff would be okay. But I don't know. Good to go. Alright. Uh Quill's up. Slightly better odds. Come up here and have a couple of interesting options. For unobstructed shots. Um, we still have a fair amount of Gauss ammo, so I'm going to take the shot on the commando here. I mean, you know, one out of ten shots will hit. This one didn't, but that's the way it goes. Standing by. Uh, alright. It's power armor, even with Kane, which has got... He's got huge boost to melee attack. He's still only 50-50. And it would be ridiculous overkill. It'd be great if I could melee these guys. But I can't even get in firing... Like, I can't even get in cover. I suppose I could with a sprint. Or a jump. And that's not terrible. Do I just go for the 50-50 melee on the power armor? I mean, if I hit him, he's gonna die. Oh yeah, and if I just try to shoot, what would be looking at? Yeah, not great. Can I get better than 50? 56. Alright. Massive weapon overkill, like damage overkill, but okay. Yeah, they're so hard to hit. And they still pack weaponry. Like, that can be kind of dangerous, so... Alright, that was worth it. Uh, now the Osiris is too, too, too hot. Um, I'm going to move up a little, rather than move just back, because I want to be ready for a good shot next turn. So I'm going to do this. We'll go. And then I'll just brace. So I'm in the woods. I'll be braced. Got a little bit of evasion. Get rid of most of my heat. Even in not desert, the Osiris will have a hard time. Even Tundra, I think the Osiris will have a hard time. Um, one of the things... And I don't know if, like, Rogue Tech actually has AI mods or whatever, but the AI is quite a bit more defensive, I feel. It might just be a side effect of, like, different, you know, to hit chances and whatever. But, like, look at that retreating action. It's crazy. And this can go bad in, like, seconds. One, like, one of those hits, like, it's low percentage chances, which means there's just a, a lot of, like, there's going to be a lot of misses. Your, your chief survivability will be from avoiding damage. But it means if you do get hit, you're probably going to get horribly messed up. Full speed. No target. Uh, I can still take a shot here. And I will against the commando. Oh, well. But I was happy to sprint up as much as possible to Kane. You. Um, uh, point nine. It's too bad I don't have jump jets on Quill. I will move up, because there's huge range limiters, and here we're going to be it. defended by long range the other way, too. Any chance this is slightly better? I'll fire the commander. Oh, hey! So there we go, one in ten, man. It's going to happen sometimes. Waiting for and then dead mate... <laughs> Still not going to get to do anything. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, well, one jump jet. We could have jumped from here to there. Saved ourselves three order. turns of movement. Now, I want to move to this tile here, please. Thank you. Let's see what we can do. Affirmative. We might not be in a good fire range. And with the heat the Osiris generates, we might want to be a little bit more stingy about this. And there you go. I can fire three and still be at zero heat. Target locked. And miss. Okay. Crap. No joy. <laughs> Crap. Oh, the white. I think they have a lot of electronic packages. I think that's one of the reasons we had a hard time getting any vision on him. I think he's got a lot of ECM, maybe some stealth components. Orders. He's going to be hard to kill. Well, here's the thing. We've got a slightly better chance to hit the white. I mean, yes, we've damaged Commando and we want to focus fire, but... And we've got a 33% better chance to hit the white, effectively, right? Miss. When you're going from, like, 15% to 20%. I mean, I know it's 5% from one point of view, but it's also 33% from another point of view. Uh, so Kane's still in a not range of melee, because you can sprint melee. Do I just run up and do this? I mean, it is Kane we're talking about, so it feels about right. I mean, I suppose I could sprint and be in cover... And not get a bad chance to hit. Yeah, sure, let's do that. 
because you do get a slight penalty. Uh, so we may as well shoot the white again. Again, this guy's so low. He has lost some of his weapons, though. That's such a bad chance to hit, though. The white hasn't moved as much. Let, let's go. We can take some stuff off the white. No. But yeah, I've got... Ow. 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 I think that might have been a pulse large laser. 20... 40% damage return? Maybe? I don't know. I'm trying to do the math. Could have been three different weapons, I suppose. Commando with the missing arm. Commandos do look kind of cool. Oh, you're firing a quill. Ow, 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 ow. And blinded? Oof. So yeah, we're, I mean, the yes, thing is, Commander. every point of damage we take here is dramatically increasing our repair time. All right, we'll move to here. We've we'll got some confirmed. cover. We'll be able to take a full volley. We've got a flanking move on the commando, but he moved. Oh, wow, wow, these odds are terrible. I'll go ahead and hit the... I'll do a three-weapon attack against the commando. And still generate no heat. Confirmed. We hit with two! Hitting the engine. Target's taking a critical hit. He still exists, though, so... What can I do for you? And it's a little bit weird. Um, let me take a sprint here. Into the open. It's fine with the, the cicada. Metal. We're still a million miles away from their weapons. Like, Oh, wow, that's actually shockingly good. Oh, he's unstable, so he's lost all his movement stuff. We still have a penalty from long range and stealth, but he's not moving. He doesn't have the evasion tips anymore. That's huge! There. No more chaff, maybe? That's a crit. It's not a destroyed. So it's still there. The damage is good. Oh, there you go. He's out of the picture. So Quill's just gonna chill. Wow. See, Quill needs some jump jets. Um, let me, let me just reserve you. Maybe the white will move to somewhere better for me. I don't know. Well, he definitely moved. Ow, 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 Oh, these repair times are going to be insane. It's like, thank God we're not losing anything, like any parts. Someone's going to lose some parts here, though. Uh, 63? Wow. 63%. That's really bad. Jam by ECM. Cover evasive. Yeah, we missed him. We did have a pretty legit bad roll, too. Commander? If I just tried to laser you here. Terrain. Target effects plus four. Yeah, the, I'm pretty sure the white is like a giant, like, stealth bot. And you get the stealth range modifier, too. Man, I would love that technology. It's probably worth a ton. Okay, can I somehow move? I suppose I could... Oh, I can't even jump behind him, really? So I could move to here. He might be able to shoot me from behind, but... Not really be in the woods, especially if I move here. Even that's not high accuracy. I guess he could... No, he might... If he's got jump jets, he could jump to here and hit me from behind. I mean, that's still sort of true even here. 8.5, there we go. We're gonna get some height and slightly increase our chance to hit. Moving slightly. To Son of a bitch, this guy's gonna be tough. Um, I'm still gonna go for, like, no heat generation. Oh, you know what? We'll generate a little heat. Firing on and I'd target. love to fire the acid missiles. But it's, like, 0.9% chance? Yeah, at least he's running hot. That's good. We don't have any weapons to take advantage of that. Okay, we're gonna sprint forward with the Cicada. We're still a million miles away. I'm not going to bother with this shot. Yes, Commander. And Quill. Uh, do we start, like, skirting around here with Quill? Whatever. Just take the shot. 0.9% chance. <laughs> Negative damage. How long is it going to take us to kill this damn white? It's a good thing he never moved up and truly engaged us. Because he would be able to operate basically with impunity. All right. Uh, if I go from here, 69. If I go from here, I can I can melee from the back. So that's what we're gonna do. But yeah, our chance to hit. Ah! Oh my! That again, seven percent roll. That's not a chance to hit fail. That's just us rolling really poorly. What's up, boss? Uh, yeah. Quill, just wait. Again, we're hoping that maybe he'll expose himself somewhere. But waiting for the right move. With with his stealth and ECM, it's not gonna be possible. 
did jump to here. And, oh my god, you better not- No! No, my hatchet! See, it doesn't take much. Oh my god, how are we gonna kill this guy? It's a good- Fuck, it's such a good thing we've killed everyone else first. Okay, so, he's jumped literally right next to me. He's exposing his back to me. He's daring me to shoot him in the- shoot him in the back. And look at this, like, it's still terrible odds. Oh, we do actually overheat slightly. And again, like, offensive push would be bad. It would make my chance to hit worse. Target lost on enemy <laughs> Welcome Negative to Rogue damage. Tech. Oh my god. Is that like... What are we gonna... God damn! I, I need this mech. I need all these components. I want a mech that's like, untouchable like this. If we had any sensor tech whatsoever, this wouldn't be so bad. We don't, so it is. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, he's destroyed my hatchet. Luckily, I don't think buying a new hatchet, if I can find one, I don't think that'll be too expensive. But damn. Well, I mean, we may as well run up and try to melee you. Oh, yeah, we're only doing 91 now. Um, it's still our best chance. 50% chance to hit is still our best chance. Order are we going to miss melee a third time in a row? Okay, we finally hit him. In the engine. There we go. That's that's something. 23% chance to hit. He's evasive now. Oh, we need to land some of these. He's not evasive anymore, rather, I should say, because he's unstable is what I meant to say. We're, we do want to avoid an ammo explosion. There you go. Um, I suppose I can move so I'm not hitting him in the back. But no, this is fine. Set up the acid missiles. And more hits equals more chances for him to fail a stability check. There we go. Whew! What can I do Dead mate, you? you're gonna walk up here. And take a shot on the down target. Don't need to tell me twice. Um... I will target the head. I'm gonna try to hope to get some injuries. This would be a good time if we did have a... Uh, if we did have a machine gun or something like that. Okay, we took him out. <laughs> we took more damage fighting this white than anyone else in the, in, the, in the whole fight. Well, okay, we took more, like, sort of crits in that. We had been weakened before that, you know? Some of our armor got stripped away. So we only make 22,000 bucks because we took minimal money and our drop costs are 46,000. And then, oh, the repairs are going to suck. Kane got four kills, though. And do you remember, we don't get crit, uh, credit for people who eject it either. Hey, folks, Quill from the future here. Um, I'm voicing over myself because uh, we're actually going to encounter a bug here in a minute, and it's uh, going to lead to a bit of confusion. I want to say that I w did record this on the latest version of Rogue Tech that was available when I started recording it, um, but there was, just after this, uh, they uh, they did discover the bug, and there's a patch that came out. So if you grab the latest version of Rogue Tech now, this bug that you're about to see in a minute shouldn't be present. Um, basically here, I'm just discussing the um, pros and cons about what to pick up in the game. We're also, oh, I'm also talking about these uh, C3 systems, which are quite cool because they let you share sensor information between mechs, which is good because as we've seen in our run here, um, just because you can see someone properly with one mech doesn't mean you can see it properly with another. So by having these C3 systems, you can sort of um, just share all that vision information, which makes your accuracy a lot more, uh, just, just a lot better. Um, I also talk about the pros and cons of what to buy. Early on in the campaign, it's very very easy to accidentally go bankrupt. Um, and the reason for that is if you have any sort of downtime for your repairs, for example, you're going to be spending a lot of it. So you might have a lot of downtime for repairs because even any armor damage, as I mentioned in the, the playthrough, requires some repair time. And that means you might be spending one or even two months worth of maintenance costs, just your upkeep, right? Of what, like 40 grand a month or 400,000 a month or something like that at the start of the game. Um, between missions, so it can be very easy to go bankrupt. And while grabbing mechs and building mechs tends to be the best way to make money, um, it's it's a little less so in Rogue Tech. And the reason for it is in vanilla Ro in vanilla Battle Tech, you only need three mech parts to complete a mech. And when you do, you get a fully functional mech with all of its systems intact. You know, PPCs, auto cannons, all that, all intact. So then, if you go and sell the mech, you get tons of value from it because you can sell the mech chassis and then you can sell the 
each individual part as well. In rogue tech, first of all, by default, you need five parts. So now each uh, mech part is effectively worth less. Um, in addition to that, when you complete a mech in the default rogue tech set settings, the mech is not a shiny new brand new mech. Most of the systems will actually be damaged or destroyed or missing. So your mech, in addition to needing more parts, is going to be sort of overall less valuable. Now, in the long term, especially as you start getting to the medium and heavy and, and, and assault mechs, that's probably still the big money maker. But early on, grabbing engines, grabbing heat sink kits, not necessarily just heat sinks, but heat sink kits tends to be a huge money maker. You can see here, I'm actually grabbing a clan double heat sink kit. And it by itself is worth about half a mech. And it's just a single part, and I can sell it right away if I'm starting to run into money problems. And since Upgrading the Argo is very important. In fact, I mean, it's important in regular Battletech, but it's m even more so, I would say, in Rogue Tech. Again, because you tend to have to repair all your mechs after a battle, you, you need to really upgrade your, your repair facilities as much as possible. And there's two ways to do that in Rogue Tech. One, you can get more tech points, so you repair faster, but you can actually get multiple repair bays going so that they repair simultaneously. When you upgrade your mech bay to have, to go from, what is it, six mechs to 12 mechs, in addition to that, it enables having a second mech being repaired at the same time. At first, it's at only 50% speed, but you can, one of the other upgrades you can get makes your second mech bay go at 100% speed. And you can actually get a third mech bay. So in the end, you can get three mechs all repairing simultaneously at full speed. So, um... It becomes less of a problem. You were going to repair a lot faster. So you really want to upgrade the Arco as much as possible, which means you need early money. And so that's why I emphasize, I, I try to pick up things that, um, that are worth lots of money. I aim for lots of money. I think I talked about like, oh, there's a good defensive gyro system that would have been handy for us, but I went just for max money. Here you can see the glitch really in, option, in action here. As soon as I hit confirm, nothing happened, and then the UI starts to get wonkier and wonkier and wonkier here, and yeah, um, it, it turns out that, yep, yeah, okay, yeah, there was just something they became aware of. I, I'd done other things. This doesn't happen every time, but they did become aware that this was a glitch in the thing, and they've got a patch up. By the time you guys see this video, there should be, should be patch three, um, should be the thing that's got the fix for this. Patch 2, I think, was supposed to fix it, and it looks like it didn't quite do it. So there will be a patch 3 that will uh, sort this out. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I still love Rogue Tech, and I still highly, highly recommend it. It's got a lot of moving parts, and 998 is a brand new release. They did have an alpha, but they were still making a few changes along the way. So, um, you know, there might, there might be a couple other things we discover as we go, but they're pretty fast about fixing things, uh, which is very, very nice. So there you go. There's a look at Rogue Tech. Do plan on doing some more Rogue Tech content, probably on streams, because it turns out streaming Battletech is super fun, because the drama and the fact that you guys encourage me to make really dumb moves is a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. See you next time.